robust solution providing multi-carrier support along with many other enhancements such as the line item integration and LTL support. Um, we ask that you hold questions till the end. Everybody's muted right now. Um, if you have comments, you can use the questions pane on the control panel, and we'll try to answer those as we go. Otherwise, we will also have a Q&A se session along with some polling questions at the end. And um, V Technologies will also plan to reach out to everyone with a follow-up call. Um, if you're interested in learning more, we can um, have separate one-on-one -on -one conversations with you to discuss either Starship's integration into QuickBooks and or um, the addition of EDI into your workflow. So today we have James Roth joining us from True Commerce. Um, he's a pre-sales engineer over there, knows quite a bit about our solutions, and so I'm going to turn it over to him. He can discuss this a little more. Great. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for having us today. should be fun. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, and hopefully you're not too busy getting shipments out the door for the holiday season. Uh, but either way, thank you again for joining us and allowing me this time to provide you with a pr quick presentation through some slides, and then I'll get into the live product demonstration, which I'm sure most are looking forward to. So again, I'm one of the pre-sales engineers at True Commerce EDI. I'm going to give you a brief overview of who we are here at True Commerce. Uh, we are a high jump company. High jump has been around for over 30 years. Uh, one of the strongest leaders in supply chain management solutions. We have different divisions for different business needs. All right? And so the True Commerce Group, that's who I represent, we focus on EDI, which stands for Electronic Data Interchange. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, there's a slide to uh, kind of explain what that is and where it comes into play. All right? Uh, so yeah, we focus on EDI. We're a preferred partner with Intuit and also a gold developer with Intuit. We're headquartered just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we have offices in Virginia, Ohio, and some remote employees as well. Well over 150 dedicated EDI employees. We're constantly growing our team, right? but we're very well staffed and trained to help our close to, or I guess, probably over now 5,000 customers. Uh, so since 1995, here at True Commerce, we've been supporting startups, small to medium-sized businesses with easy-to-use and integrated EDI solutions. Okay? I could go on and on, but let's continue. EDI, electronic data interchange. So what is it? Uh, there's two primary standards of EDI, okay? There's a North American standard called X12, and then there's a European standard called Edifact. We can support either. So whether you're dealing with US-based customers or folks overseas, we're able to support you and make you compliant and connected. But basically EDI, it's just a common language between uh, two different computer systems or businesses. So two different, it's one language, it's a common standard language. So that way if you were a vendor of say Costco or a vendor of Walmart, uh, you know, those companies use massive enterprise level systems like SAP, Oracle, et cetera. Um, well this common language, that we're talking about today will allow you using you know, QuickBooks and Starship uh, to communicate with those larger players out there. So the EDI is just the common language in between yourself and say Walmart or Costco or Amazon, et cetera. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And it looks just like computer garble and we translate it so it's a more reader friendly format. And then we, we do provide that integration into QuickBooks and also with Starship. All right. So this slide is just showing you the different customers or trading partners that you could be uh, dealing with. Okay, we call them trading partners. They could be vendors. They could be customers of yours. Uh, but there's many different connectivity methods uh, and also protocols for EDI. And there's a lot of technical jargon that goes on, but we take care of that for you. Okay, but every retailer, grocer, big dot com business out there will either force you to sign up with someone like a Commerce Hub or you know, Amazon has a free portal called Vendor Central. The problem, you know, with all these different portals that you'll have to log into and jump, you know, log into to one portal for this customer, another portal for another customer, it, it just overcomplicates everything. All right, so here at True Commerce, we're not only going to be able to keep you compliant and connected with your largest customers, but we're also going to help streamline all of the orders from all the different channels into a single simple platform that we call Transaction Manager. Okay, so this slide's just showing you that it doesn't matter how your trading partner connects 
or how they mandate it. Uh, VANS, it's not like a like a vehicle <laughs> on the road. Uh, VAN stands for Value Added Network. Okay, it's kind of just a secure network. We own, we operate as a VAN, but we can connect to customers that require AS2, which is just a more secure way of transmitting data through security certificate. It's very much like an FTP or file transfer protocol. But then there's companies out there like Commerce Hub. So if you're dealing with a Costco.com, BedBathAndBeyond.com, a lot of the .coms use Commerce Hub. Uh, Commerce Hub just helps distribute the orders to the appropriate vendors. Um, so it's just nice to know that we provide one interface that can connect you to all of these different trading partners. And there's even a list out on our website. Okay, so there's that. Now, a lot of challenges you may be running into if you're doing EDI today or if you're looking into EDI down the road or you know, maybe a possible customers or forcing you to do it or if you're drop shipping directly to consumers uh, that shop on Target.com or BedBath.com or Costco.com. Well, instead of having employees manually entering data into QuickBooks or having to take data from Starship and copy and paste data into a portal like Commerce Hub or Vendor Central for Amazon, We've partnered with V Technologies and Intuit to provide the most streamlined approach to reduce the risk of manual entry, which could cause errors. We're all human. It happens. Um, yeah, the, the problems with the various portals and that approach for processing orders are many, but the biggest problem I hear day in and day out, excuse me one second, I'm going to clear my throat. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, but again, the biggest problem I hear day in, day out from prospects or customers uh, for, for shipping would be matching up the UPS or FedEx label with the EDI specific label, right? Or matching the Costco branded packing list with the corresponding UPS or FedEx label and package. Or another problem is having one workflow or process in the warehouse for small parcel shipments compared to those shipments that need to go out you know, LTL. Okay. But all these problems we hear about day in, day out, you know, we're solving that for you with Starship, with Transaction Manager for EI, and also with, with our partner uh, Intuit for QuickBooks. These problems are resolved. Okay, So as you are completing and packing out your shipment and uh, you know, processing your EDI shipment through Starship, you're also not only able to print out the UPS, the FedEx label, uh, but you're also able to print out the, the EDI label. We call it a GS1-128 label. It's a four by six inch carton label, uh, and it's required by most retailers out there. So it's pretty common, and we can help educate you on that in more detail if need be. But it, it's just a huge value add to be able to print both of those off at once. That way, you're not having two stacks of labels, and you're having to match up the label with the appropriate box, right? And then the other huge benefit that you're going to see: uh, these trading partners require what's called an advanced ship notification, right? And and the reason we've partnered with Starship, right, and the folks at V Technologies, is so that we can pull everything that you've packed and shipped and transmit that up to your customer seamlessly without additional manual entry, et cetera. So, right. Now, before I begin the demo, the live demo with all the products working together, I just wanted to give you a high level overview of the process flow, all right? Uh, and I like to refer to the integration between our solutions with QuickBooks um, as the perfect triangle. Okay, so you'll see True Commerce up there. Um, our product is called Transaction Manager. So Transaction Manager is going to receive, okay, the the purchase orders from your various customers. All right, and then we're also able to then take the orders, and this can be automated, but you can then take the orders from Transaction Manager and. Uh, export those orders into QuickBooks as sales orders okay? or sales invoices, depending. You have control over that. But then once the order is inside of uh, QuickBooks, Starship will then be able to pull that order with the line item detail and any other fields that need to be pulled. Uh, and we'll be able to process that shipment in its entirety within Starship. Okay, and you'll see that here today. Labels, packing lists, bill of ladings, there's rate shopping, which is a huge uh, you know, bonus. I, I from from the customers that I have that are using Starship, they love the rate shopping. Okay, it's pretty pretty ideal. And the bill of lading solution, all of that is just superior. But then once the shipment is completed, the shipment will leave your your uh, your warehouse. It'll go out to the customers, and then anything that you've packed and shipped in Starship gets pulled and sent to those EDI customers. 
right? We pull in the Starship detail, the shipping file, and we're going to translate that to whether it's Bed Bath or Target or Amazon.com's uh, ASN in their format, and we'll send that off and transmit that out to them. Okay. And also, same applies with the, the invoice. Once you have your QuickBooks invoice created, whether we've created it initially or if you create it uh, you know, turning around the sales order into an invoice, uh, we can automatically have that invoice be sent back to your customer uh, in, in the EDI format. Okay. And again, if there are questions, feel free to use the, the, the question pod there in the GoToMeeting and we'll uh, address those uh, at the end. Okay. So I'm going to push pause and I'm going to get my other screen shared out, so just bear with me. Okay. And just so you know, I've prepared this with a single order and it's going to be for Amazon, but as I mentioned before, we can connect you to well over 5,000 customers receiving all your big Cyber Monday orders, thousands and thousands of orders at once and process everything in batches or you can automate it. So what I'm going to do today is just show you how to do the manual process of receiving an order into Transaction Manager. All right, we're going to bring that order, we're going to push it into QuickBooks as a sales order. Then I'm going to pull the uh, sales order into Starship, I'll complete the shipment, and then I'll show you how that transmission of data goes back to the customer. Right, so it should be pretty exciting. But as you can see, this is Transaction Manager and it's, looked, it, it's designed to look just like an email application. We have two flavors of our product. We have a web-based version. We have an on-premise version. They are identical in nature. Okay. Uh, they both have the same buttons, same look, same feel. You're going to be able to go in here to the inbox. So this is an, an example of Amazon placing an order with us. Okay. And uh, I received an email notification. A free alert went out to, to James Roth in the warehouse or in the, the front office. And I can go in here and I can view the order in Transaction Manager if I wanted to prior to exporting the order out. All right. So by opening the order, you just double click on it, it'll open up. Uh, there's three ways to view the transaction. This is your default view called Transaction Details. Breaks your order out into different tabs, different fields. Um, we do have item translation tables available. All right. uh, that's helpful to know because you could sell one product, one umbrella, one you know, widget, one product in QuickBooks, it's one product you're shipping, but maybe five customers are ordering that product five different ways. It happens all the time. Maybe even different unit of measures. They could be ordering in cases, but you're tracking that item in eaches or vice versa. I had another scenario a couple days ago um, where a, a customer was selling barrels of jalapenos. Uh, the customer orders in pounds, but he tracks her inventory in barrels. That's fine. We could even handle that. Or I had another prospect that was having issues with another provider because they couldn't get the way uh, the customer orders in each is of socks but one bundle of socks equals 12 e uh, well they order in each is this customer tracks it in bundles of 12 that's a simple translation that we can handle all right, so there's all kinds of different examples I could throw out there but uh, just know when this hits QuickBooks it'll look a little different okay um, it'll have your ship to address and all of that so this is the, the default view and then you also have the print preview. There's also a print preview right from the initial screen. So if you wanted to print out all your orders at once, it'll show up on the screen there as like a PDF and you could do whatever you want to do to it. Um, some customers like paper, I personally don't. I would say save this off to a PDF or print it to a PDF using cute PDF. But if you wanted to print it out, you can. But one of the benefits we're providing is the seamless integration directly to QuickBooks Online, or I'm sorry, QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, so that way you don't have to print it out, sit there and key it in or have two monitors up, one with QuickBooks, one with Transaction Manager. Now you'll see with the click of a button we'll have all the orders flow in and as I mentioned you can have it go in as a sales order or direct to a sales invoice, whichever you prefer. Okay. And I believe Starship's able to pull either one so you'll be alright uh, in either scenario. Um, let me show you what the raw EDI looks like. I like pointing this out Number one, this would be the button to avoid clicking on if you do not want to see this data ever again. Or maybe you are EDI savvy and you want to troubleshoot. You're able to read the different segments and elements. It's kind of hard to see, but at the end of the day, even if it was clear to see on the screen, uh, it still would be kind of difficult to read with the different segments and elements, etc. 
Um, but this is what your order will look like. If Amazon sent the order to you electronically, or if you are using the Commerce Hub, if you're shipping to HomeDepot.com consumers, right? This is what it's transmitting, uh, transmitted to you. Okay. So you are able to view any EDI transaction three ways, which is kind of neat. Okay, so let's go ahead and just bring this order into QuickBooks, all right? So I'm just going to hit export. There's price validation, there's item validation, uh, there's rules like duplicate order detection we can enable, uh, lots of lookup tables, like I mentioned, unit of measure conversion, that's usually uh, the most common of lookups to convert each to cases and vice versa. Um, but just like that, it's a two-way street for communication. So not, not only are we talking to QuickBooks, QuickBooks is going to create the order and then tell transaction manager, reply back, letting us know whether it was a successful export or maybe it was rejected. It's possible that QuickBooks could reject an order. Maybe an item didn't exist or the, cus the customer didn't exist. Uh, granted, we can um, create a new customer if you wanted to, but usually you don't want that to happen. You want to associate the Amazon new customer relationship with your QuickBooks customer. So that way orders go to the correct places. But here we didn't have any errors. Okay, we had that one successful transaction. And, and notice there's the status below. We've moved the transactions that are successful to the received folder. So they just jump down a folder here, right, to the received box. And there your export button goes away, and you don't run the risk of exporting it again by accident. All right, and just to show you how QuickBooks replies back, letting us know what sales order number was generated. These little blue folders are pretty nifty. They tell you the sales order number right on screen. So 8871. And it also tells you what you did or didn't do to the transaction. So if I go to QuickBooks and I look at my sales orders, okay, just like that, 8871. I'm just going to write that down in case I forget. So let's open this up. Uh, we're able to write to any field inside of QuickBooks, whether it's a custom field or it's a default out-of-the-box field. We're able to customize. Each customer of ours has their own uh, specific mapping, uh, maps, basically, uh, for custom fields, right? You have a note field you want us to push data into. Uh, if you're drop shipping directly to a consumer and it's a gift, that gift message, there's really, there really isn't a place in QuickBooks for a gift message, so you can create a field and then we'll just map to that field and dump that gift message there. Um, you know, we can set it up so that we're not overwriting the QuickBooks price, right? And we can write the EDI price to a different column. Okay, so it's basically just relieving human entry. Right? And that way it frees up time for other people to do more marketing uh, events or tasks as opposed to keying in data or having, you don't have to hire an intern uh, to handle all of your Cyber Monday orders. Okay, so it's just eliminating that. All right, so now let's go into Starship and we're going to pull this order over. So 8871. So this is Starship. If, if uh, I'll, I'll let Caroline be the expert with Starship, but uh, if you have any detailed questions. But this is Starship, so it, it's definitely more robust than Ship Gear. Uh, it's, it's a great product, highly recommend it. Any, any of our customers that are doing EDI, especially with advanced ship notices, we try to get them to look into Starship, and most of them do, and they love it. So check it out. Uh, but we'll just plug in 8871, and you are able to pull not just from sales orders that drop down, we'll let you know, uh, you know what different documents. I think sales receipts, sales invoices as well. But, um, but there it is. There's your order, 8871, inside of QuickBooks. And we'll go ahead and just load this document in. Um, if you're doing multiple boxes for your shipments, that's perfectly fine. Um, we can Not only can Starship handle that, but that's the level of detail that your customers are looking for in the EDI world. Okay, Amazon wants to know what order you're shipping. They also want to know how many boxes you're shipping to them and also what's in each box. Okay, So you can go in here and go through and add multiple boxes, remove boxes, drag and drop the items into the appropriate box, et cetera. A little, Sure, Caroline can help with little tips and tricks on that part of it. Um, you know, weights, calculus, being. Oh, 
Go ahead. James, just to in, interject here um, for our ship gear customers, this is a, one of the um, largest differences between the two applications um, is that you, you'll see that umbrella that was brought in. Um, well, that's the item level information that I was referring to earlier. Um, and by bringing that information in, that's how we can automate this, um, you know, uh, messages over to transaction manager for your EDI purposes. Um, currently, with ship gear, we're really just dealing with header level information, so the items don't really come into play, and therefore you can't really do much with EDI. Um, it also, for um, other orders like uh, LTL or international, um, these line items can help automate those types of shipments as well, um, because we'll, we'll store some additional information in Starship, like the Schedule B or Harmonized Code um, classes, all that type of information we can store inside a Starship, fold that information in as, as the order comes in um, to help you with those processes as far as printing documents, uh, BOLs, commercial invoice, that kind of stuff. Okay, thanks James. James, you still there? Hello, everyone. This is James again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I don't know what happened. I think GoToMeeting or Vixus has just kicked me out, so I'm back. <laughs> Phew, you came back. I was like, I don't know if I yeah. can go any further than that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very sorry about that. Okay, it's all you. That's a, that's a Citrix problem for sure. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> that happens again. I'll, I don't know what I'll do. I'll just dial back in. But... Um, yeah, so you know, Amazon is looking for the level of detail needed that QuickBooks just doesn't offer or support, which again is why with True Commerce Transaction Manager, with QuickBooks, and with Starship, it's just that perfect triangle for EDI customers. It really is. Um, so yeah, we can go ahead, and I'm just going to ship this out. Uh, I'm going to hit F5, and that'll F5. Got to be on the screen in order for that to work. Okay. And it went ahead and shipped that. Now, if you, as long as, for those EDI customers, there's going to be a little icon down here, integration with, it's not checked right now because we're not even on a real shipment right now. But as long as you have this enabled, as soon as you process that shipment, okay, Starship's kicking out a data file for Transaction Manager. Okay. Um, that file can automatically be imported into Transaction Manager and converted into EDI. I'm going to show you how to do it manually, but just know most customers would schedule this out to be automated. All right. So I'm going to go back into Transaction Manager. Just like we can automate the QuickBooks integration, this part with the file that Starship creates can be automated, so you don't even have to go through these clicks. But I'm going to go into my Outbox. Okay. And the Outbox is similar to a draft folder in an email. All right. Uh, what you're going to be able to do here is import what? With Starship and with QuickBooks, we give you this little prompt, because what are we wanting to import? Are we wanting to import a file for, from Starship, or do we want to import the QuickBooks invoice directly from QuickBooks? So that's why you're seeing this prompt here. But again, most people would just automate this so you're not even prompted. And then you'll be able to tell our software where this file resides, right? And or files, because you can grab multiple files at once if you wanted to as well. Right? So if I grab three shipment files and I hit open, and we should, on the screen, now have three Amazon ship notifications. So as I mentioned, everything that you've packed and shipped within Starship is now going out to Amazon in their format that's required by them. Okay, and it's every trading partner, they call EDI a standard. I call it a standard with many standards. Because if you look at an Amazon ship notice, it's different than a Walmart ship notice, which is different than a Target in, uh, ship notice. But that's what we take care of for you. All right, we're taking the Starship data, and then we're on the True Commerce side. We're mapping it to the trading partner specific file type and format. Um, one thing I like to point out also with EDI, because it's a little daunting, because there are required fields. Every trading partner you have will say these are the fields that are marked as required. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open one up, and I'm going to delete something that's required. Right, shipment ID. So we'll go ahead and cut that out. Now what happens? 
if we did try to automatically send these out, Troy, select all, or if it was if you, if you did it manually, you'll see it fail. But if it was automated at the end of the day to transmit all ASNs at the end of each day, right? We'll send what we can. We'll fail what we can't send. And that's a good thing. We don't want you sending documents that are missing, required, or key pieces of information that your customer is looking for. Okay. So you, it kind of gives you a chance to correct the mistake before you transmit it. 68. There you are. And it includes the shipping detail, so it'll lay out you know, how many cartons you're sending. That was only a single carton or box. Because uh, those umbrellas are pretty small, I can put up to 20 in a box. So that's why we have order, carton, item in the carton. Okay. And then the labels you voted already would have printed out of Starship, right? You would have printed out both the UPS and um, the EDI label at the same time, which makes sense. You want to do it at the time of packing and shipping. You don't want to do it after the fact here in Transaction Manager. Um, that is that. Okay. Now, if we go back into QuickBooks, and Caroline, if you want to step in and, and talk more about this, but if I just go back to my, my QuickBooks sales order here, it's already been you know, marked as shipped and all that. Okay. Yeah, so and this then, is very similar to um, how ShipGear works as far as the write back goes. So you can um, write the freight charges and shipment detail back. Um, and then you can obviously use some freight rules if. Um, you know, if you want to change the freight cost and automate the calculation of the cost in any way. Okay, great. Yeah, and then I'll, what I'll do, I'll um, I'll go ahead and just create an invoice from that sales order. Sorry, let my screen just paused. There we are. Okay, we'll go ahead and create the invoice here. Okay. And if this line needs to be removed when we import it and send it back to Amazon, we'll do that upon import. And then also any any conversions that applied, okay, um, any any conversion that we applied going into QuickBooks when we pull it back out, it'll be the same. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we're, we will revert it back to how Amazon originally placed that order via. Okay, so invoice 71142. Oh, this is uh, advanced inventory, so I apologize. Let me get rid of this go to meeting window. There we go. Just pick from our Atlanta warehouse. There we go. Save and close. Boom. Again, the real nice thing about pulling that invoice, it can be automated. So at the end of the day, you can just schedule an event within Transaction Manager to go ahead and automatically import, translate, and send that off. All right. So let me go back here and do uh, Transaction Manager. Now, give me one second. I want to make sure. Whoever set this up did it correctly. Cool. Well, James is I just doing wanted to that. Make sure. I was just going to say, if anybody has any questions, feel free to enter those into the questions pane so that we can get to those at the end. Okay. Thanks, James. Okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. I just wanted to make sure the save search was going to work for us. And it will. So the import of the invoice from QuickBooks is the same process as pulling the Starship data. All right, but this time we're just going to click on import. This little search is going to appear. All right, and what you're able to do is save a search. So you can you can select from this drop down, and just to let you know, our EDI solution today we're just talking about bringing orders from customers into QuickBooks and then pulling invoices and sending those back out. Um, we do have the ability of pulling if you have a manufacturer uh, that that does EDI and you create a purchase order for that vendor. We can pull purchase orders out of here, and we can send it out as well. Okay, um, or if you have a third-party warehouse, we have an advanced QuickBooks integration. Which, if you have, if let's say your main warehouse is on the East Coast, let's say in Pennsylvania, okay, and you want to increase sales out on the West Coast, so you pick up a third-party warehouse out there because it's too expensive to build your own, uh, right? So um, if you picked up a third-party warehouse, we're able to transmit sales orders that don't go to Starship, we can pull sales orders that go to the warehouse from QuickBooks and sending those out. So we have a pretty uh, pretty robust integration with QuickBooks, but today we're focusing really on just invoices. But what you're able to do is save your search. Oop, there's a save button there. 
Uh, I have a save search that I'm going to just click on to run. Okay. And then it locates. So that search calls out, hey, QuickBooks, are there any invoices that haven't been processed for Amazon? Okay. Check the box or not. You can just have this automated. Sorry, let's go to meetings in the way again. There we go. Hit import. And what we're going to do is just take that invoice we just created for Amazon in QuickBooks and we translate it to that nasty looking computer language, right, that raw EDI, format it to Amazon's what we call the 810 invoice, and now you can send it off on its merry way. So it's a very robust integration, not only with Intuit, with QuickBooks, but also with Starship. Um, and there's so much logic we can apply on the pushing and pulling of data. Okay. And there's all kinds of bells and whistles in Transaction Manager. We have a, a really neat uh, reporting feature. Um, you'd obviously want to still stick with, with uh, Starship for, for shipping reports and QuickBooks for financial reports, but we have a reporting tool in our product which allows you uh, to create EDI specific reports. Um, you know, show me a list of orders that you still haven't sent invoices for and then that report can be even emailed to you automatically if you'd like. Um, so there's all kinds of bells and whistles but I'll kind of leave it there um, and then oh, real quick before I forget, if you're new to EDI, uh, if you're looking into it, anytime you send or receive an EDI transaction, there is always a date and time stamp that goes along with it. Okay. So when you receive an order for say from, say, Amazon, uh, once that order hits your mailbox on our network, we're sending that date and time stamp back on your behalf. So it's, it's not anything you have to do. We'll do it for you. And then on the, on, the, on the other side of the fence, when you send an invoice or a ship notice back out to Amazon, right, they in turn will um, reply back or should reply back with the date and time stamp acknowledgement as well. If they don't, Transaction Manager, our network, will send you an email to let you know, hey, uh, invoice 71142 that you sent X amount of hours ago was never acknowledged. It's just a nice way to make sure that everything was received that should have been received and everyone's getting what, they, what they're supposed to. Okay, so give me one second. I'm going to switch back to PowerPoint. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with any any more slides, really. Uh, any questions? And that's you know kind of where I can hand it back over to Caroline, and you know we can answer some of those questions that folks might have. Cool, um, James. There are a couple of questions, EDI-related questions. Um, the first question is, uh, what if you need to cancel an order from Amazon? How is that transaction completed? <laughs> So with Amazon specifically, they require an acknowledgement, just like they require it in Vendor Central. Um, they also re would require the same thing within 24 hours, and it's called a purchase order acknowledgement. It's a little different than the date and time stamp acknowledgement that we were just talking about, but you can either do it in Vendor Central, you can either cancel a, an item or a whole order um, in Vendor Central or in Transaction Manager, or we could look at, depending on how you have QuickBooks set up, um, we can uh, we can pull the sales order as long as we're not pulling sales orders sending them to a third-party warehouse like I mentioned previously we can definitely look at pulling a sales order out of QuickBooks and send that back to Amazon as the acknowledgement um, so that document in EDI land is called a purchase order acknowledgement and it's pretty common um, but we can definitely help you there uh, whether it's you, know, you do it manually in our software which is pretty simple or if you want to look at pulling it from QuickBooks as, uh, from that sales order, we can look at that as well. Awesome, thanks. And um, just so you know, guys, there is a poll up on your screen, so if you would take a minute to um, answer some of these questions, we want to make sure that we follow up with you appropriately. Um, next question, what transaction sets are available, X12.855, X12, and a couple other X12s? <laughs> That's totally up for you, James. Yep, I got gotcha. you. So any EDI transaction or in any version of EDI document we can support. Um, it really depends, I think that's Bob that you asked that, uh, it really depends on the trading partner and what they support. Uh, and you know, we just talked about the 855, that's the PO acknowledgement. Um, the 832, that's a price sales catalog. And for those folks that are wondering what are these numbers that we're throwing out there, uh, there's over 300 EDI documents and every 
uh, EDI document out there, every business document in an EDI has just a number fixed or assigned to it. Like a purchase order is known as an 850. Uh, no matter if you're getting an order from Amazon, Walmart, or Target, they're going to refer to a purchase order as an 850. That's just EDI talk, right? Um, the 832 would be a price sales catalog, which would be essentially your item list um, and the price and description for that item. And a lot of customers either would um, want you to send that to them. If you're the vendor, you can upload that to them. Uh, we probably wouldn't pull that directly from QuickBooks, but we could pull it from a, like a CSV or a text file. Um, and then the 867 is more of a resale report, um, meaning if you are, let's just say you're do, dealing with uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, you need to report back to uh, the pharmaceutical uh, company that you're buying from what you've sold to, and to whom. Um, it's also pretty common in the food industry uh, or in even if you're dealing with like dog food, right, or dog, any, any kind of animal product, I should say, um, for animal consumption. So, yeah, we are definitely available, um, yeah, able, able to handle any uh, X12 transaction. And depending on what it is and what purpose it serves, we can look at either pulling from a QuickBooks or pushing to a QuickBooks or in and out of some other uh, kind of database or file system. Great, thanks. Um, James, we have another question, which I think might be both of us, um, but I wanted to start with you on your answer. Um, is your software compatible with our website that is hosted by Volusion? Short answer is no. Um, however, we do, we acquired another uh, company uh, a couple years ago. It's called Nexternal, um, and it's an e-commerce platform. It would replace something like Volusion, um, and then yes, from that, we would be, if you, if you had our external product, we can bring external uh, e-commerce orders from your website into, say, QuickBooks. Uh, but unfortunately, with Volusion, um, it's not possible with, with our product. So, Yeah, and on, I have the Starship some side, on the Starship side, um, it's pretty much the same answer. We don't currently integrate to Volusion. Um, but so, just so you guys know, it is on our roadmap to um, continue working with marketplaces and uh, cart integrations and expanding our interfaces to support those. Um, so Valencia, I'll make sure that Volusion, you're associated to Volusion um, so that we can notify you of any changes. Um, but currently, Starship really is just going to be integrating directly into the QuickBooks orders or invoices that would be created by uh, TrueCommerce if they were EDI orders. But there are, and I'll just add to that real quick, there are, usually I'll just say if you just Google it, um, there are middlewares or adapters that you can fit in between Volusion and QuickBooks. So then that way, once you get the orders into QuickBooks from Volusion through some means, um, from there, Starship would be able to pick those orders up. So. Exactly. Thanks, James. Um, James, mm -hmm. another question for you. I've seen reference to Transaction Manager from um, QuickBooks. Is this a standard feature, um, and are there additional costs associated to Transaction Manager with QuickBooks? So it, it depends on a couple of things. For pricing, I'm not the best person to talk to or cost, but I will say it depends on the version of QuickBooks that you're running. Okay, uh, If you look in, uh, you know, we are preferred by Intuit. If you look in your QuickBooks uh, Enterprise uh, user interface, the UI, if you go into customer and add tools, I think it's add marketing tools, um, it will put you out to our landing page essentially in QuickBooks and it says that it's free. Um, it's, or you really, you get a super steep discount at the end of the day, uh, but it really depends on your version of QuickBooks. So we just have to talk in more depth. We can get you in touch with one of our, uh, our sales reps. Um, but then also, um, it depends on the number of trading partners as well that you're connecting to. Um, but yeah, there would be some additional costs uh, associated to not only you know, adding additional, additional trading partners, then you know, tying it into QuickBooks, usually that's built into the cost, no additional, just because of our relationship with Intuit, we don't usually charge additional for the QuickBooks integration, that's kind of given to you. Um, but then, you know, the, the Starship integration, that would be an additional fee just because we're pulling the Starship file, it's one consistent file, but we're then having to map that to however many customers you have. So it's affordable, 
right? Because we have to we we price our solution based on the package that we're integrating with, so it's a very affordable solution for for uh, for Intuit users. Thanks, James. Was that the question, yep, or was that the answer great. you're looking for? Okay. <laughs> um, it looks like 33% of you voted. We appreciate that. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about um, either Starship or True Commerce, make sure you make those selections so that we can reach back out to you. Um, James, I don't know if you have any uh, final words, but I think we're we're good to go on my side. I think just thank you, and I accidentally. I, there were two other slides, but it just said thank you, and it had my contact information up there. Um, Hold on one second. I'm going to exit the poll so that we can get that back. One sec. Okay. okay. Yeah, just there's my contact information. If you want to get a hold of me, you can email me directly. If I'm not the right person to talk to, I'll get you in touch with that person, or you can give me a call. Um, I usually put my 800 number on there, but you know, I, I don't think anyone has to worry about long distance <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want a more in-depth demonstration uh, and you have specific questions relating to EDI or the QuickBooks integration or the Starship integration or any of your trading partner's requirements, just let us know. That's what we're here for. Uh, I'll be happy to help. And then finally... Oh, I thought there was another slide, but I lied. <laughs> so that's that. Um, but thank you, everyone, very much for your time, and I hope it was helpful. Awesome. Thanks, James. That was great. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Okay. Talk to you guys later. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.